Literature is full of the magical and mysterious forests that exist in the imagination of writers. Yet it is nature that has created the most curious, sprawling, enigmatic forest of all, the mangrove. Mangroves are labyrinths of vegetation which appear to float in the water. At first glance, it looks like an aerial forest whose roots rise up like columns, scaffolds or buttresses, as alive as the foliage itself. Traveling through a mangrove forest is like entering a fairy story where the trees, the water, and the mud all have their secrets. Perhaps the most remarkable aspect of the mangrove is that it grows over the water, forming an alliance between vegetation and coastal waters. Its growth depends on one factor alone. There must not be more than three consecutive nights of frost in the course of the year. This is why it is only found in tropical and subtropical areas. They proliferate there, extending over swampy coastal zones and around the mouths of rivers. There is a wide variety of mangroves, from the smallest shrubs to enormous trees over 30 meters high. They forge new land. They can rob the sea of its land and avoid the erosion of destructive tropical storms. It may seem incredible that a forest can grow over water, but it is even more astounding that it can grow over the sea itself. Its roots, branches, and leaves are in permanent contact with the salty water. The vast majority of plants would die in such conditions. Yet the mangrove is bursting with life. The water blends sweetness and saltiness, attracting countless animals searching for food and refuge between its branches or roots. Mangroves are the only place in which certain species of snakes, birds, and invertebrates are found. And they live there without ever setting foot on dry land. The rhythm of the mangrove is dictated by the ebb and flow of the tides. As the water rises and falls every six hours, so the scene and its players change. Some of the best secrets are uncovered when the tide is out.
From the soft, foul-smelling ground emerge thin rods that cover sizable areas. They form part of the roots of the black mangrove, which instead of digging down, rise to the surface with a special mission. These are aerial roots known as pneumatophores, which enable the mangrove to get the oxygen it needs to survive, while the remainder of the root grows in the muddy depths. They form a miniature landscape that is home to some of the most peculiar characters. While the water covers the mud and roots, tiny fiddler crabs remain buried a few centimeters below the surface, safe from the currents that could drag them into the sea. As the water retreats, they rush off with the speed of a creature that knows it's only a matter of time before the next flooding. Their lives are a race against time, and they do everything under great pressure. They must defend their territory and attract females while gobbling down mud as fast as they can. They start to use their pincers and combat begins. They find food by filtering the highly nutritious mud of the mangrove forest, which is constantly deposited thanks to the intertwining structure of the tree roots. scour this area for food when the tide is out, and the crabs are a tasty snack. These dunlins are as jumpy and quick as the crabs. These wading birds depend on their eyesight in order to hunt and use a method known as stop and go, which consists of sprinting and then stopping short in order to see their victims and catch them by surprise. But other birds will draw us towards the foliage. The large canals that crisscross through the mangroves form solitary islands where herons gather to form their mating colonies. The river forms a moat that protects their city as if it were a miniature Venice. The bog which extends beneath the branches provides food for their offspring. This is certainly a good place to live.
The life of the white ibis also revolves around the mangrove. At high tide, it waits among the branches. When the tide goes out, it approaches the swamp in search of food. It has a sensitive curved beak so that it can catch prey using its refined sense of touch. The crabs in the mud are its favorite morsel. Ibis are sociable animals that form colonies in the quiet areas, safe from land predators. They often share colonies with other birds that live in the mangroves. Their chicks grow quickly and are able to move around the branches to explore and demand food from their parents. of the mangrove hold the key to another secret of this special place. A living tree in salt water has to adapt in a special way. The sea salt continuously penetrates the body of the tree. Some mangroves solve this problem by carrying the salt to the oldest leaves, which will soon wither and die. Others have leaves that secrete the excess salt, forming a fine residue on the leaves. Another curious feature is that its seeds sprout on the tree before falling and floating in the water until they reach a suitable spot in shallow waters. They often look like a stylus and become encrusted in the ground as soon as they fall. The salty forest works on a rotating basis. Gradually, the sea gains ground and the foliage becomes a refuge for land fauna. For several hours, they must wait to feed or climb down to the ground. Each creature spends the time in its own way. The night heron hides among the branches of the mangrove, sleeping peacefully until nightfall. Other creatures, meanwhile, anxiously await the rising tide and there are other secrets yet to be discovered.
One of these is the sea turtle, which seeks temporary shelter in these parts. For generations, they have visited their sanctuary on the beaches. There, in the darkness of the night, they will go up to their territories and lay their eggs, far from their enemies. When the tide rises, the mangrove forest takes on new forms of life. Mangroves, in contrast to intertidal zones devoid of vegetation, are very attractive to aquatic fauna. The roots of the trees form a thick, impenetrable thicket, which provides protection for the infinite array of small fish that spend the first stages of life here. Not only is it a place of refuge, food is in plentiful supply, and the nooks and crannies for hiding, feeding, and slinking away mean that there is a wide variety of fauna here. The reason that roots are so suitable for protecting life is that they reduce the impact of the currents and encourage deposits of silt and mud forming stores of nutrients that provide food for crustaceans, mollusks, and fish. But there are plenty of predators, too. They know there is food in abundance, although it's no easy catch. Some sharks make their way from the sea to the mangroves, hoping to sate their hunger. At the same time, it's a good place to relax and feel safe. Mangroves have another surprise in store. They are the kingdom of mermaids, 
or so thought the first Europeans who observed the manatees. Of course, legend had described them as being rather more beautiful. Manatees are mammals with a strange appearance. Their large pot-bellied bodies are covered in coarse rough skin, much like an elephant's hide. Stray hairs sprout out here and there. Algae and crustaceans often stick to them, forming tiny ecological communities that attract a variety of fish. The fish clean the manatee and rid it of its resident parasites. Following it as if it were a benevolent guardian, providing them with food and shelter. Despite its lumbering appearance, manatees are skillful swimmers which propel themselves using their caudal fin, similar to a large Chinese fan. The pectoral fins are very useful for moving around on the sea floor or for handling food. They often use them to caress and touch fellow manatees. The mangroves give them calm waters full of food. They often feed on the algae, but they also look for the leaves and branches that hang over the water. During winter, they leave the cold seawater behind, and in some areas, they gather around hot springs. Then they will return to their beloved home, none other than the dark and mysterious water of the mangroves. <laughs>